Hello everyone and welcome to the first game we'll be showing from round 2 of the FIDE Candidates Tournament 2022. Uh, it is the first game that finished and it is uh, former World Chess Championship challenger Yanni Pomnishi versus former World Chess Championship challenger Fabian Caruana. Both of them have, have faced uh, Magnus Carlsen in the World Chess Championship match, uh, Nepo in, um, uh, in 2020 uh, and of course Fabiano Caruana in 2018 and uh, this is of course a very very big clash and uh, as it often is, um, especially when Fabi playing okay uh, uh, probably the most complicated games i've ever seen are the ones uh, that fabi plays sometimes the ones that the ding plays and of course uh, i'm not counting the one that dubov plays uh, because those moves are impossible to calculate but from the moves that are possible to calculate uh, i'm pretty sure fabi plays the most complicated chess and uh, even in the uh, candidates tournament here where you have so much time there's so much time control you can win additional time after reaching move 40 then you get uh, more uh, uh, you know when you reach move 6 60, uh, there was just not enough time to, um, uh, you know, continue this game, uh, but uh, it's incredibly complicated and incredibly enjoyable, so, so many awesome lines, uh, let's dive straight into it, but uh, I'm pretty sure I will be uh, showing another game as soon as I show this one, because, uh, well, uh, it, you know, the boards are uh, starting to catch fire. So, Nepo with the white pieces opens with e4, we have e5 by Fabi, knight to f3, knight to c6, and bishop to c4. And of course, Fabi plays knight to f6. He avoids the Evans gambit by go by not going bishop to c5, d3, and now bishop to c5. We have castles d6, and now c3. So a very uh, standard line of the Gioco Pianissimo. Uh, we have a6, and now pawn to a4. We have bishop back to a7, and now rook to e1. So again, this is all very very standard stuff. We have h6 here, uh, knight b to d2, and now we have g5. And this, although it looks like a very aggressive move. It's, um, it's a pretty standard idea. Many uh, incredibly strong players have played this move. Uh, for example, Wesley So uh, played it against Vladimir Kramnik. He defeated him in, in the Grandchester Blitz uh, tournament in Paris. Uh, also, uh, Magnus Carlsen played this move against uh, Sergei Karyakin. Uh, the game ended in a draw. They played it in the London Chess Classic in 20, uh, 2017. Uh, so it's uh, definitely um, a, a very interesting move. Uh, Castles is by far the more, more popular one, but the G5 is also uh, very much played so of course b4 uh, when your opponent does something on the king side uh, feel free to push that b4 it's winning free space on the queen side and now uh, there are a couple of moves that were played in this uh, position for example Wesley so played knight to h7 against Vladimir Kramnik in the game that we mentioned uh, mentioned uh, Magnus Carlsen played knight to h5 here uh, in the game against Karyakin that we mentioned also g4 is a known move so there are a couple of um, uh, very strong ideas here, but Fabi goes for the one that was never played, and it's already a very, very interesting one, and that is Knight to G4. So already, as of move 10, we have a completely new game, and uh, it's basically a move that uh, we, whenever we do, a, a, you know, a, an Italian game, that doesn't really matter which line, I always say that it doesn't make sense to play <laughs> Bishop to G4, a Knight to G4 to go after the F2 pawn, uh, because White can just play Rook to E2, and you don't really have anything here. And what better move to play than the one that no one plays in the candidates tournament. So really good stuff by Fabi. Uh, here, rook to e2. Uh, just or, or You could play rook to f1, but that's just, uh, you know, moving the rook back to where it came from. Uh, you know, you, you would rather uh, admit, admit defeat than do, do that. So rook to e2. And now queen to f6. Fabi going very aggressive against this uh, f2 pawn. Queen to e1 by Nepo. And now queen to g7. Sort of fianchetto in your queen. Knight to f1. And now we have castles by Fabi. Knight to g3 and knight to e7 now. So you always have to, uh, uh, you know, w uh, worry about w whether the king will sidestep this uh, this diagonal, whether f5 is coming. Uh, those are those are very very uh, critical ideas here. So here d4, best way to counter uh, an attack on the king side is to counter attack in the center. So they say, e captures on d4 and c captures on d4. And now the real question is why is Nepo offering the uh, d4 pawn? Is it just a uh, is it just a free pawn? Well, if you capture it, for example, bishop captures on d4, you would not have a, a, a very good time. For example, knight, uh, even better, you don't capture right away, you play rook to a3. And this is just a full mobilization of your pieces. It seems like a good idea to capture because it's a bishop, but this is even stronger. Bishop goes back, we're going to push it back even further, let's say bishop to a7, and now we go for knight to f5, attack the queen, and once we give up another pawn, captures, captures, and captures, now we play bishop to b2, and we've fully mobilized all of our pieces, 
uh, it's going to be very, very hard for black to play this. Let's say queen h7, you play h3, and what can black do? Uh, it's not not the greatest of positions. Probably knight captures an f2, uh, but uh, even this will leave white with a, with a better position. Rook captures, we're going to play rook a8. Of course, the rook can always be captured. Queen d2, let's say captures, for example, captures here. Queen captures, now c6, and the game continues uh, with white having very, very good chances. So uh, bishop captures on d4 isn't really the way to go. So Fabi goes knight to c6, puts more pressure on the d4 pawn, and then now rook to a3. Again, you could play bishop to b2, and it is possible to play this where we just trade knight captures. Captures, knight captures, bishop captures, bishop captures, let's say queen captures and rook to c1. Uh, you do get some development in, but um, uh, it's not uh, not as scary. But Nepo not interested in that. He goes rook to a3. Uh, now the rook can always be shifted over to the king side to help out with the attack. And now Fabi grabs the pawn. And it is in fact the strongest move here. Knight captures on d4. Knight captures, bishop captures, and now pawn to h3. Challenging the knight here. Knight to e5, and now bishop back to a2. So uh, he gave up a pawn, but uh, he has a very, very strong bishop. And also once he kicks away this bishop and this bishop, Bishop assumes this diagonal is going to be it's going to be basically a bishop pair from hell uh, and now Fabi could continue with something like bishop to e6 to counter the light square bishop right away but he strikes with c5 first he wants to uh, take care of the situation in the center on the queen side and then uh, he he really doesn't have all that much to worry about b captures on c5 bishop captures on c5 now attacking the rook here and rook to b3 uh, asking uh, Fabi, what do you play now? And he just uh, plays b5. Uh, yeah, bishop to e6 looks nice, but then the b7 pawn hangs. So here b5, uh, knight to f5 now, going after the queen, and Fabi just moves it. You could capture it right away, for example, captures, captures, and just go for the cold-blooded b captures on a4. Uh, but after rook to g3, it's uh, uh, it's very much playable, but maybe you don't want to uh, do this. It, it is the candidates tournament after all. So first queen to f6, we're going to prepare uh, the capture on f5 properly. King to h2, uh, moving the king away from this diagonal, and now b captures on a4. So giving up a pawn, but rook to g3. And now you have to worry about a lot of things. The bishop is attacking g5, h4 uh, uh, could happen, f4 could happen, so many... Uh, moves uh, are possible here. So Fabi plays king to h7, gets the king away from the g-file, and this is the uh, moment where you could like uh, spend really an eternity calculating lines, uh, because I'm just going to show uh, <laughs> one very special one uh, that did not happen in the game, and that is pawn to f4. And this is such a beautiful forced line uh, that, uh, well, it could have been a game of its own. So g captures on f4, we're going to play bishop captures on f4, now put a lot of pressure on that h6 pawn. So we have to capture bishop captures on f5, b bishop captures on e5 first, queen captures, e captures, and now you can't capture the f5 pawn because bishop to b1 uh, wins the queen. So you're going to have to move the queen, queen f4, now we're going to play bishop captures on f7. A uh, complete mess of a position. Rook captures on f7. Now rook to e7, going for the attack. And here we're going to play rook to f8, but now pawn to f6. Of course, uh, uh, you, you can't uh, do just anything here. And uh, you have to capture this pawn. So queen captures on f6. Now queen to e4 with check. King to h8. And now rook to e6, going after the h6 pawn. And here we would get this complete mad madness uh, of, a, of a position where you, you have a couple of options, like maybe d5 counterattacking. But the nicest one, I believe, is bishop to f2. Uh, just giving up the queen. And after rook captures on f6, bishop captures with check. King captures, now rook to g7 with check. You even allow rook to g6. It seems like you've blundered the game, but just rook captures on g6. And if queen captures, we just... Uh, uh, capture the queen and then of course our uh, a pawn is winning so you have you're gonna have to move the king let's say rook to g8 and you get some sort of a position that is queen against two rooks with black having so many pawns uh, it's a draw uh, because there's no way you're gonna checkmate the white king with your own king being so white in the open uh, but I mean, it's just it, it's just beautiful. But Nepo uh, decides that it is uh, too too uh, risky to go for that, and you don't really gain anything. Uh, so he plays queen to d1, and queen to d1 is one of those moves that does nothing, but uh, also does everything. It's full of possibilities, and it just allows Fabi uh, to very easily make a mistake. Uh, what is what is happening here with? Uh, 
uh, the king side. Uh, well, here Favi played bishop to d7. And uh, he wants to, of course, activate the bishop. He wants to connect the rooks. And he's inviting Nepo to sacrifice on h6, which looks possible. You have all this pressure on g5, uh, but it doesn't work. Let's say knight captures, queen captures. You're going to capture on g5, just queen h5. And there is no good way for white to continue this attack. And black's pieces are very, very harmonious. Rook is coming to g8. Uh, you will not uh, gain anything from this. So instead, we have rook to c2. Another very, very tricky move by Nepo. Uh, just uh, asking Fabi, what do you play now? And uh, the real idea behind this is that, um, uh, well, uh, you you always have this pressure against the bishop. So let's say if the knight moves, we can capture the bishop and then the bishop on d7 falls. So there are uh, ideas like this. It's a very unlikely that this will happen. Uh, but the real reason the rook to c2 was played is that the queen gets access to the h5 square. And now let's say Fabi plays something like a5. It's a silly move, but just to show you the threats, uh, bishop captures and g5 just wins on the spot now. Because after h captures, queen h5 checks and it's game over. King g8, rook captures on g5 with check, and you can't really block with knight to g6 because the f7 pawn doesn't really exist. So just rook captures and that's it. We win the queen, uh, it's game over. Queen captures, queen captures, of course, uh, that's it, resigns. So here Fabi says, all right, that's a very impressive idea, but uh, I'm not actually going to fall for that. So bishop captures on f5, he just eliminates one of the uh, main threats, uh, the, the knight on f5, and now e captures on f5 and rook a to b8. This is how Fabi plays this. Uh, the situation on the clock, which I think is very important uh, for this game, uh, 34 minutes for Nepo uh, and 24 minutes for Fabi. Uh, and uh, just queen to h5. Did you really expect any other move uh, from uh, from Yanni Pomnishi? Uh, and uh, the, uh, again, uh, the, can you capture on f5? That's the question. No, no you can't. If queen captures on h5, now comes the uh, rook captures on c5 idea that uh, that is also one of the possibilities with the rook being on c2 uh, as the queen is attacking it so you have to move the rook with tempo d captures on c5 now rook captures on g5 and of course black resigns if queen f6 we just capture on e5 and there is no move you can make here the bishop very simply too strong uh, there is no defending this position so after queen h5 rook to g8 was played by fabi uh, and now comes bishop to b2. Uh, finally, Nepo's bishop pair is fully operational. Uh, okay, maybe not fully operational. It would be better if, for example, this pawn disappeared and the bishop came to b1. But even this is um, incredible. Uh, but here we have rook g to e8 by Fabi. Bishop back to c1. Again, putting pressure on this g5 pawn. And Fabi defends it again. We have bishop to b2. Rook g to e8. And here bishop to c1. And incredible as it is, it was in this position on move 33 that Yanni Pomnishi and Fabiano Caruana agreed to a draw as uh, well I'm not gonna say there is nothing to be done here because there are uh, a couple of moves that Fabi could have considered and of course he did consider them he just uh, I, I think he was already below 10 minutes on the clock and he just did not want to push this it's only move 33 in an incredibly sharp position uh, so a, a draw is is definitely fitting here, but I will just show you one line uh, that is uh, well so full of possibilities. Instead of um, in, instead of repeating rook g to e8, we capture the bishop here. Rook captures on b2, and now uh, okay the next move is forced. We have to capture back. Now we play a3. Okay, we get a, a protected pass pawn on a3. Now the rook has to move. Where does the rook go? If you move uh, away from the b file, then black wins the b file. If you uh, play rook to b7, which is definitely strongest, you keep the b file. Uh, you uh, promote your rook to a pig. You put extra pressure on f7. It's not a problem. Bishop captures on f2. We attack the rook. Okay, we give up the pawn on a3. Rook captures on a3, and now that this is probably uh, the, the position uh, you you get when you start calculating at that position where Fabi agreed to a draw. But then if you had a little bit more time on the clock and were willing to invest, uh, you find d5. And this is such a scary move to face uh, because now this diagonal opens up. And this is, uh, and of course, the pawn cannot be captured. If you capture the pawn, queen d6 just wins. You're attacking the bishop and also threatening all sorts of nasty discoveries. Uh, this is just resigns. So you would have to allow the pass pawn to survive. You would have to play something else. G three probably to uh, prevent all of these ideas uh, and now queen to c6 we attack the rook on b7 and there is no uh well there's just no good good move to make here uh what wh wh what do you play here it's it's so 
at I mean it's such a such a terrible move. If you, if you play some silly move, then uh, Queen to c1, attacking the rook on a3 and also threatening checkmate on g1. Uh, th there are so many uh, awesome moves here. If you play rook to b1, uh, then there are even ideas of g4, and now the <laughs> the, the knight will be able to come to uh, to g4, and there, there's no good move here. If you play something like pawn to h4, uh, then Queen to c2 again, attacking the rook, uh, uh, threatening all sorts of nasty discovery here and there's no way to parry all the threats uh, but the real uh, question is after let's say queen to c6 what happens if we play queen to e2 we give up a little bit of material to eliminate this knight and what happens then well this is the actual line that we have to check queen captures on b7 Queen captures on e5, but now, okay, we move the bishop back, bishop to a7, and even after bishop captures on d5, we're gonna play queen b5, pin the bishop, not allow bishop captures on f7, and now f6, trying to get this uh, bishop to e4 check in to maybe get a queen trade, but now king h8, and uh, the real evaluation of this position is that black is just winning. Uh, there's no way to reach um, uh, the black king. Uh, black is up in material, black is up a pawn, he has a passed a pawn, and the white king is also uh, completely uh, in the open, you have to be very, very careful. With, even with perfect play, this position would be winning for Fabi. But okay, this is really just going uh, uh, incredibly deep into the position, you know, uh, in, in, in a situation where Fabi did not have enough time to even consider such things. Uh, so yeah, after bishop to c1, they agreed to a draw, and maybe, perhaps, uh, a chance was missed here, but uh, that's just chess. Even with all the time control in the candidates tournament, uh, it was not enough time uh, for Fabi to, to work all of this out as uh, I mean it, it is just impossible to calculate but uh, uh, I, I hope you you now see what I meant uh, that uh, one of the mo uh, you know the pro probably the most complicated games that we see on this channel are, are Fabi's games uh, so yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. The first game that finished uh, in round two of the FIDE Candidates tournament. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We are uh, probably going to show another one very quickly as uh, I, I saw that it, it was about um, at the finish when I started preparing this video. Uh, I would like to wish a very happy birthday to Levan. I uh, hope you had, uh, had a great day. And I would like to thank uh, Andrew Lastova, uh, Johan, uh, Derek King, and Aravind Kumar Vendeli for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of the Candidates Tournament uh, until it finishes. So thank you all, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.